and I want you to notice that Apostle Paul continues to say that after we know the love of God he says I want you to begin to think if you can read that verse put up the verse he says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think verse 20 according to the power that works in us I want you to notice that God is saying he is able to do exceedingly above all beyond what we ask or even think so leave it on so here is God saying that I can think higher than you I can do more than you so the first component of our walking in the new mind is constantly remember God loves you the second one that I want us to remember is this is that God wants us to think higher than our circumstances or think on the level of your belief not your fear think higher than your circumstances it's as though God is saying that I think I am so much higher than your circumstances I want you to think higher than your circumstances each one of us are surrounded with circumstances each one of us are surrounded with the things around us and God wants you to think higher than those circumstances God wants your mind to always be higher because the Bible says that we have to meditate on the, on the Word of God. We have to meditate on it day and night and the Word of God is so much higher than sickness. God's Word is so much higher than any problem. Amen Michael? God's Word is so much higher than any poverty. Amen? God's Word is so much higher than any depression. God's Word is so much higher than any anxiety and Michael can say amen. God's word is so much higher than any anything we face and so God is saying since I am higher than your circumstances since I can do more than your circumstances I want your mind to be on the same plane with me I want your mind to be on the same plane with me have you noticed that the way even the Lord designed our head that our head is on the top God did not put your brains to be under your soles or your feet. God did not put your head somewhere in the middle. God put your head to be the top. So that you always, in your mind is always higher than anything else. But sometimes that's the only physically. But in every other area, our head is over under our feet. Many times our mind is always under our circumstances and we say things like that. Oh, I am, my mind is so overloaded. My mind is so overwhelmed. It's as though we threw our head and threw it on the ground and we're walking and what's on the top? Problems. God wants your mind to be on the top, not your problems. Can somebody say amen? God wants your mind to be on the top, not the demons that are seeking to attack your life. Can somebody say amen? When your mind is on the top, something begins to happen a miracle begins to happen I think I've shared this story before of two men in England who were diagnosed with a disease that will eventually make them paralyzed and unable to walk and one of those men he accepted that diagnosis and said okay I guess that's who I'm gonna become and the other man says no I reject that and I will not accept this I will learn how to walk and I will learn how to run eventually that disease accelerated in both of their bodies and they uh, became paralyzed they were not able to walk and so one man being paralyzed started to exercise and begin to walk and he fell and people made fun of him and they said nobody can walk with this disease but he kept trying and trying and finally he learned to kind of walk with a very big limp as he was walking he said I'm gonna go even do more I'm gonna run well they said that's impossible he started to run and he was running and running and running until one day he always had a mind bigger than his circumstances at that point at that time nobody has ever beat a record of running a mile under four minutes this has never been broken in the whole world history they even have released bulls and had guys in red running and had bulls running and herding runners so they can break a four mile or a four minute mile record they've done everything and nobody could break it and this guy who's supposed to not walk all his life says not only I'm walking and running I am going to break a world record 
of running a mile under four minutes. He believed in it. They, of course, they said that's impossible. Doctors have done a study where they said, humanly, it's impossible. And if you will run a mile under four minutes, your body will die. He still didn't believe it. Because you're running about 15 miles per hour. And he put his mind above that. And he says, I can do it. He says, I was supposed to be paralyzed. And the doctor says, I shouldn't be walking. So if they're saying this, maybe I should just rise above it. On this particular day, in May 6th, 1954, Roger Bannister, this is the exact moment, and that is him, he broke a world record of running a mile under four minutes. <laughs> the amazing part is 40 days later, another man breaks the same record. And in that year, 24 people broke that record. Today, high school students break that record. He no longer has the record because somebody already broke that record of running a mile in three minutes and some 40 some seconds. It just shows how somebody said it's impossible and everybody believed it. And somebody says, I'll think higher than that. See, God says, I am higher than your thoughts. But if God is higher than our thoughts, our thoughts should be higher than our circumstances. And somebody say amen. If God is higher than your thoughts, your thoughts should be higher than your circumstances. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say think higher. Think higher. Somebody say think higher. think higher. You gotta think higher. If you're living low, think high. If you're eating low, think high. Never think on the level of your feelings. Don't think on the level of your circumstances. If things are the same, think higher. If a guy can do it with running, you can do it with God. You can do it with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? We always have to rise higher. I remember reading a story about a man named Charles Darrow. And he was the man who lived in Pennsylvania. And he was a retired and retired unemployed man and the reason why he was unemployed because stock market crashed during the, the great depression time and he had no money his family was struggling he had young children and they were struggling and they were being so poor that it was just just depression was just getting into his mind and he was a mind he was a man who had a very interesting mind he always kept his mind occupied even when he had no work and so what he did because he lived in Atlantic City he drew a map on that kitchen tablecloth of Atlantic City went down to the local stores because nobody would be hiring so he asked them for some cheap material cheap wood and cheap cloth and came home at night and him and his wife and the kids played a game of what it's like to be wealthy it was just a game it was just a game so that they can keep their minds off of the fact they're poor because they had other poor friends in the evenings other poor people would come and say what are you guys doing there hey we're playing rich we're pretending we're rich they said can we play with you since we're poor like you oh you're welcome and everybody starts playing a game where they are can become rich without any work until those friends started to win at the game and they said hey would you mind if you sell us a game for four dollars he said i don't mind at all he would sell a game and make another one sell a game and make another one until he went to this company who produced games and he said hey guys i have this amazing game that helps poor people feel like they're rich would you buy it they looked at his game and they found 52 fundamental errors and they said, your game is too long, too stupid, too complicated. Rules are too bad. Your game is bad. He didn't get discouraged. You know what he did? He printed 5,000 of those games and started asking each store, hey, would you mind having a game that helps poor people feel rich? And some stores would buy it. Some stores won't. Until one person who bought the game, who was actually a daughter of the very guy who rejected that game. He looked at him, he says, what are you doing? He says, oh, this just game helps poor people feel, feel rich. He said, this is, and he just watched her and he just ridiculed her, made fun of her until he kept watching. He says, wow, this is actually very interesting. He brought the guy back. 
he said I'll buy your game and this guy started to receive royalties within a very very short time he became a millionaire he is actually the wealthiest man who made the most money from a game that most of you have played a game called Monopoly huh? <laughs> 52 fundamental errors <laughs> the point is this a man chose to think above his circumstances he could have become a man who says I'm broke like a joke I should live and I should settle he said my mind is gonna be higher my income is here my mind is gonna be higher amen and the most amazing part is we have the Word of God we're not just sitting here trying to put some positive thoughts in your head so you walk around and if you're struggling just think better think higher no no we're talking about think higher because God is even higher think higher because God is even higher can somebody say amen